After our Rhine River cruise, we took the train from Cologne, Germany, through Liège, Belgium, to Leuven. Our friend picked us up at the Leuven station and drove us to her home outside Arschat. Their neighborhood is walking and biking friendly and close to the Demmer River, which is very well set up for walking and biking. The popular trail leads right into downtown Arschat. The Demmer flows from Diest, where we drove and walked to a drop-in point, picked up rented kayaks, and paddled and floated slowly downriver. It was a fun and relaxing way to spend an afternoon. At the end, we walked to the Zikum station and took the train back to our car. Belgium is divided into three autonomous regions, French-speaking Wallonia in the south, the central Brussels region is the capital of the country, as well as the European Union and NATO. The late 19th century train station is beautiful, as is the flamboyant main square. Brussels is also home to Mannequin Piss, a Belgian icon, tourist attraction, and subject of endless souvenirs. Northern Dutch-speaking Flanders is where we spent most of our time. Antwerp is the second largest Belgian city after Brussels. The diamond capital of the world, we found Antwerp much more interesting than Brussels. It has all the expected usual sites, like the main square and cathedral, but Antwerp just felt like a more welcoming and livable city. Also in Flanders, Leuven is known as the Oxford of Belgium, with the country's oldest and largest university founded in 1425. Students make up roughly half of the city's population. The Catholic University Library is worth a visit. Climbing its impressive bell tower provides a panoramic view of the city, as well as a history lesson. The library along with large swaths of the city and cities all over Belgium, was destroyed twice by the Germans, in 1914 and again in 1940, with over one million volumes lost. The rebuilt building is beautiful, funded largely by donations from American institutions. Leuven also has Belgium's oldest botanic garden, built in 1738 for the university's medical students. July and August are full of festivals in Belgium. One was in full swing in Leuven, but it wasn't the biggest or the best that we would encounter. Belgium is under 300 kilometers from east to west, and it's easy to cross by train. Traveling through Brussels to get to Ghent and on to Brugge, Bruges in French, we explored Western Flanders. The first thing we did in Brugge was to go to a nearby park for a riverside picnic lunch. Brugge is famous for its architecture and canals, which are easily seen by walking around, though boat tours are very popular. The medieval Church of Our Lady contains several notable works of art, including a marble Madonna and Child carved by Michelangelo. Before we left Brugge, we had to grab some Belgian chocolates from a recommended store. Ghent was our favorite city in Flanders. It has a robust transit system like Antwerp with the classic Flemish architecture 
and extensive canals of Bruga. Though the massive number of tour boats are not appreciated by all residents. But Ghent also has a 12th century Gravenstein castle, which was the seat of the Count of Flanders for almost 400 years. Buying a ticket to the top of the bell tower of St. Pablo's Cathedral gives you a bird's eye view of the church interior as well as a panoramic view of the city. Inside, the main part of the church is beautiful, with a shining silver entry chandelier and some marvelous stained glass. But the most interesting part requires a separate entry ticket. Moving into the upper chapels, past paintings from Dutch masters, you arrive at what's been called the world's most coveted masterpiece and most influential painting in history. The Adoration of the Mystic Lamb, or more simply, the Ghent Altarpiece, has been stolen seven times since its installation in 1432. Most recently in 1940, its recovery is a major plot point in Hollywood's Monuments Men. Find what's missing. Monuments Men, signed by Roosevelt. The Ghent Festival is a massive 10-day party every July. First held in 1843, and the most amazing celebration that we've ever witnessed. Filled with all sorts of entertainment, as well as beer, 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 and more beer. Starting every afternoon well before sundown, things really get going after dark. Especially around the canals, where the lights and the water give it an otherworldly feel. Every morning, the aftermath is efficiently swept up and hosed down, rinsed and ready to repeat the next evening. 